Okay, hello everyone. Welcome back to our channel. This is Emil. Uh, in today's video, we're going to be comparing Louis Vuitton to Gucci um, and the two holding companies of those two stocks. They're both holding companies, so they own many different brands, um, most of which you'll recognize. I'll go through all the brands that each company owns in a minute. Um, so we'll start off running through Louis Vuitton, then we'll run through Gucci, which is a uh, so Louis Vuitton is hold, held by the company Louis Vuitton Moet Hennessy, and Gucci is held by a company called Caring Caring Group. But both own like hundreds of brands, so we'll get into that in a minute. Uh, and then at the end, we will do a head to head comparison after going through all their numbers and their growth potential and everything like that. So, without further ado, let's get straight into it. Okay, so one of the first reasons I was interested in these designer brand stocks is because I wanted to diversify my portfolio out of the US, and both these companies are held in France, and are kind of collections, holding companies of many different European companies, so that's why I was interested in that originally, and also just from, you know, watching rap videos and seeing the demand for designer brands increasing so yeah the why why should we be interested in luxury items um companies uh well the rich are getting richer there's more and more people entering the middle class every day uh, this is particularly prevalent in asia where china in particular is coming into the, a lot of people in china are coming into the middle class and they really love brands over there i, I don't care if that's racist to say but they really do like i've met a lot of asian people and they're all kind of well not all of them but like a lot of them are very crazy about brands it's more of a status is very important over there not to everyone of course but a lot of a lot of people in asia are very interested in brands anyway yeah another reason why luxury kind of brands like this are nice is because they don't really get hit too badly in a recession i believe louis vuitton fell by 20 percent in the 2009 crisis or recession because this this because like middle class people tend to you know be a little bit more financially stable and still have money in a recession they're they're usually not as badly affected as the poor class so they can still splash out and they still want to show that oh we're fine we're still making money in this recession or whatever yeah and all of these brands which we will run through now they're going to be around for a long time so yeah, Louis Vuitton, they own Moet, well it's called LVMH because they own Moet and Hennessy. You're right to see that Moet and Hennessy are actually drink companies, whereas the rest are uh, designer brands. Yeah, Louis Vuitton is, Louis Vuitton and Moet and Hennessy are diverse crowd ac across many different sectors. So they're in watches, they're in uh, drinks and designer brands. Actually a couple of more things, but those are the main three. Yeah, some of these companies that Louis Vuitton owns were established in the 16th century. So the Champagne, the Vineyards, they've been around since the 16th century. So like, I don't think they're on anywhere anytime soon. They're pretty reliable companies if they're that old. Probably some of the oldest companies on the in the stock market, you know. They own all the top Champagnes, but we're, we're showing them now. So yeah, the Wines and Spirits, you know, recognize some of these names maybe. Belvedere, the Vodka. Cloudy Bay is wine, Dom Perignon. Hennessy is the best-selling spirit in the world uh, best-selling um, you know expensive spirit in the world Moet and Chandon Mercier Runach that's like the best champagne in the world so they own all the best top champagnes in the world and uh, luxury drinks now the fashion industry they own Christian Dior Louis Vuitton Marc Jacobs Givenchy that's few more that you might recognize Fendi, Fenty and some makeup brands and they own Tiger Hublot in the watches that's ground for the brands so the stock has done very well in the last five years they've really the stock price has grown extraordinarily and that's because of their revenue and has been exploding the last 10 years they've tripled their revenue which is incredible not a lot of companies have managed to do that yeah, they've paid a dividend since 2000, so pretty long-lasting dividend, 2% yield at the moment, but 
and, and with a 10% growth rate roughly. So their big grower and money maker has been, in the last few years, has been the fashion and leather goods. So uh, you've probably noticed in the last few years, so many women going out, going around with the new Louis Vuitton handbags. So that's a big, big money printer. Those handbags cost at least a at least thousand dollars and m millions of women have been buying them. So, and they've become very trendy. So that's why they're, stock price has really performed and the revenues have really performed well in the last couple of years just one of the things i'd be worried about is like once you have a louis vuitton bag are you going to get another one like mo most people once you have a louis vuitton bag you're kind of using that for the next 10 years so it's ex expensive obviously there's some people who would buy repeatedly just the newest one and different styles and different brands all the time but most women that i'd know would just buy one once make that last a number of years so maybe the trend is kind of slowing down that's just a thought of mine but i'm not an expert in the fashion industry there's there's probably a lot more to it than that so in their champagnes uh they're just increasing the prices is how they're increasing the revenue so and you can't really replicate champagne because champagne has to be grown in the champagne region region in france so cava and prosecco are the knockoffs uh, the Italian and Spanish versions but to have the actual Champagne name you need to be from Champagne in France and they all own all the best vineyards there so they can keep increasing the prices with inflation which is nice Hennessy as I said is the leading premium spirit oh there's a f fly on the fly land on the mic there okay so they're still opening stores I guess people still want to they're going to buy something for a few thousand dollars or a few thousand euro. They probably want to see it before they purchase it or they want to go into the shop and have the Louis Vuitton experience before buying it and leave the shop with their, you know, their orange bags. Uh, it's kind of a bit of an experience. So maybe that's why they're, they're still opening stores and the stores are still doing well. Uh, surprisingly, Asia is where the most revenue is coming from. More so than the US or Europe, com uh, well, not combined. Well, more so than the US and Asia but well, the growth isn't coming from Europe anyway um, it's coming from the US and Asia so this is just a pie chart of the revenue uh, by country so you can see Asia excluding Japan is 30 and Japan makes up 7% so 37% almost half is from Asia 25% a quarter from, U from the US and another quarter from Europe and then other markets 10%. Okay, so this is Louis Vuitton's numbers. Price at the moment, 350. Uh, market cap, 170. Revenue, 53. Profit margins, pretty low. Uh, PE is 23. Forward PE, 25. Industry average is 17 for the luxury goods. Market, price to sales, 3. So as you can see, it's a little bit of an expensive stock. Revenue growth, 13%, 10%, 15%. There's no projections that I could find, unfortunately. Probably because it's a European company. Net income is growing 20%, really nice. Growth there in the net income. Dividend yield, pay ratio of 44%, 2% yield. Uh, increase from the year 2000. All right, quick look at their balance sheet. Oh, the next five years, compounded annual growth rate of 13%, which is okay not warranting this PE though that's the problem okay so they have six billion in cash so it's been going up consistently uh, long-term debt just a little bit less uh, total assets 96 billion the 30 billion in property inventory has been going up a little bit which as I've mentioned before I don't really like to see uh, you kind of don't want inventory going up too much I suppose this isn't too bad but if you're stacking up inventory, it kind of signals maybe people aren't buying as much, or you're not managing your inventory levels. Uh, you're not managing your inventory levels properly, and also like inventory, if a lot of your assets are made up by inventory, is that really an asset? Thir Thirteen billion in, uh, on your assets. Like you have to actually sell them to have 13 billion. So if you can't sell them, then you don't have those that 13 billion you know so their cash minus long-term debt they're positive now which is good total assets minus total long-term debt 
38 billion but it's 30 billion which is non-tangible meaning that like stuff like goodwill and brand name you can't sell that really you can't sell goodwill it's not something you can physically sell it's not cash their total assets minus total liabilities isn't as great as it seems in my opinion so their balance sheet is okay and their price is expensive so now let's move on to Gucci aka Kering so this is the Kering group there's the brands they've owned Gucci, Yves Saint Laurent, Pateca Veneta, Balenciaga, Alexander McQueen I don't know any of the others so they don't uh, Kering is just in the designer brands space rather than you know the alcoholic beverages and watches space they're a bit of a they're a smaller company about a third the size but they're a bit they're growing a little bit faster revenue up 13 percent they're more expensive 26 dividends 1.5 i'm not going to go so in depth with the caring group but as with the louis vuitton but just a quick overview so as you can see their earnings has increased dramatically over the last number of years especially from 2016 to 2018 so that's what made this is 2016 to 2018 you can see their stock price just took the elevator up but yeah their earnings took a little hit last year not sure why uh, I couldn't find the reason why it maybe they had to make a payment a one-off payment but or in their growth slowed which I'd say is a more likely scenario because you can't really grow at a almost 100% clip for long and your earnings it has to stop eventually so their balance sheet, I didn't do a full Excel sheet for caring, but their balance sheet is cash 2.3, total assets 27 billion with 10 billion intangible, long term debt 3 billion, and total liabilities 17 billion. So their balance sheet is pretty similar to Louis Vuitton's. So now let's go head to head, finally the moment you've all been waiting for. Okay, so let's do a head to head. Brands, I gave this one to Louis Vuitton. They have more brands, more well-known brands, and and caring, in my opinion. But that's kind of up to debate. Maybe you can give it to caring if you prefer those brands and think they're going to grow in the future. Uh, diversity, sector diversity. Obviously, Louis Vuitton it's spread out over more sectors. I don't know if you think that's a good thing or a bad thing. I think it's a good thing if you're looking for safety. However, sometimes it's better if a company just controls one industry and really knows that industry in and out but i think the kind of luxury items industry can be considered just one industry so yeah that's that's that point revenue and earnings growth caring they're winning on both uh dividend yield and payout ratio louis vuitton winning in both better yield and better lower payout ratio carings was 60 percent by the way and dividend yield 1.5 PE and PS ratio, Louis Vuitton's a little bit cheaper, but not by much. Balance sheet equal and future growth for caring, in my opinion. So this is a bit of a landslide for Louis Vuitton, and that's the reason I didn't investigate further into into caring. I kind of immediately saw that Louis Vuitton was the better. Would it be just by looking at the numbers, it immediately seemed a little bit of a better buy, particularly with the PE and PS ratio, although. At the end of the day, both are too expensive for me, and I'm very interested in both of these stocks, but they're just they're too pricey for me at the moment, so I'm not buying either. Um, the buy price, I, I'm first going to be interested in Louis Vuitton if that pro, if that stock drops. So my buy range is two hundred and thirty to two hundred and seventy dollars. At the moment, it's at three fifty, and it's dropped from four fifty, so it may never reach this buy price. That would give it a P ratio between 15 and 17 at the current earnings. Uh, so anything under 270 would definitely be a buy, considering that's the lowest P ratio I've seen on Louis Vuitton, and over the last number of years is 17. Both Louis Vuitton and Carrying have had pretty significant growth since 2016, so they're both up quite a lot. So that's why they're quite expensive at the moment. So they, if they come back down, if the hype kind of dies down, that's when I'd be looking at it. So I think both of these companies are great, uh, great long-term investor investments, but just too expensive at the moment. Uh, yeah, they've no no real margin of safety at this price. 
the growth projections aren't war warranting the price at the moment. So for, for me, it's a hold. Okay, so that's all I wanted to say for this video. Um, I hope you liked my in-depth analysis. Uh, so I think Louis Vuitton is the more interesting stock at the moment. And hopefully if it drops, then I'd be happy to pick up some shares below 300 at the maximum. Um, let me know which one of these two you'd ha you prefer. Probably prefer this. Because this guy has no idea that Gucci's balance sheet is definitely worse than Louis Vuitton. So he's clearly an idiot. Um, so thanks a million for watching. If you could drop me a like, that would be hugely appreciated. Subscribe for more content like this. And I'll catch you in the next video. Cheers.